Hello guys and welcome to the first video in what is going to be a tutorial series about developing all of the runes from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So I posted a video recently where I showed you a quick demonstration of what we're going to be creating. Um, it was called Runes from Breath of the Wild or something like that. You can find that on my channel. So have a look at that if you're interested in seeing what we're going to be creating. But in this tutorial series, in a nutshell, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating in order uh, the Cryonis rune, the Stasis rune, the Magnesis rune, and finally the Remote Bomb runes, um, and also a switching mechanic on the HUD that'll allow the player the, the ability to select which rune they want to use and change in-game. So the goal is that by the end of this series you'll have a fully functioning rune system um, with all the runes from Breath of the Wild. We're not going to dig into the melee combat or arrows or anything like that. We might do that another time. Um, but that's it. So what we're going to do in this one... Um, we'll get started on the Cryonis rune in the next one, but in this one, we're just going to do the, the boring shit like set up uh, just a basic third person character and setting up the, the camera angle for when you're using the runes and all of that. Um, just stuff that we've got to get out of the way before we really crack into it. So without any further ado, let's just get started and get this out of the way. So this is just a basic third person template. Um, if you create a new project and then select third person template and then open that up, this is what you'll be presented with. Let's just start a new map first thing. So go file, new level, new map, default, like that. Uh, click on the floor and change that to um, a scale of 10. So we've got a bit of room to play around. And then just reset the position to 0, 0, 0, just like that. Now, if you go control S, we're going to create a new folder in here and we're going to call this BOTW. Uh, no, no, we're not going to do that, sorry. Forget that. Let's delete that. Uh, go to third person BP and then in maps, open that up. And then inside of here, we're going to call this BOTW underscore test map, just like that. And we're going to put everything in here related to testing the runes. So now down in your content browser like this, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this BOTW and open that up. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll actually create our link character. So if you go to content, third person BP, blueprints, you'll have a third person character. Click on that and just duplicate this and call this TPC for third person character underscore link, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to click this little icon here to open this panel up, and then you're going to drag a link into that BOTW folder. And we're going to put all our mechanics for link inside of this blueprint. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a game mode. So if you go to blueprint class up here, click on all classes, and then type in game mode like that. Um, go game mode base and click select, and we're going to call this... Uh, link underscore game mode. So open that up and the game mode is just so that we can use our link character and everything related to link on the levels that are Breath of the Wild related. So if you go over here, the only thing that we want to change um, in the details panel is under classes, go down to default pawn class and just change that to TPC link. So whenever we're using this game mode, our default character is going to be link. So if we just open up link for a second, um, this is all of the input stuff. Don't worry about all that. That's just all there so that you can move. So you kind of need that. Let's just change our material on our body to something like this. Um, that's going to need to compile the shaders. So don't worry about that. Um, the reason that I did that is because at the moment, if we hit play, you can see that we're the default um, mannequin like that. But if we go over to world settings and then change our game mode to link underscore game mode and have a look at that we should see that the default pawn class now is set to link so if we hit play we're now using our link character in the game so that's all good we're using link so if we go into our link bp the first thing that we want to set up in here um, is we might just set up the mechanic to switch to a um, a reticle view or like a you'll notice in breath of the wild the camera kind of changes when you activate a rune because the reticle appears on the screen and you can take aim so that's what we're going to set up first um let's just copy the camera boom or the spring arm or whatever and let's also copy the follow camera and attach that to the new spring arm like that um we'll just do this really roughed really rough in this video and then we'll do it better in the second one uh, in later videos. We'll just get this out of the way so that we have something to do 
have something to use. So just put this camera offset like that, something like this. So it sits off to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a reticle on this camera. So let's just call this um, rune cam like that. And this is the camera that we're going to use when we're aiming. So let's just go over to our event graph and then let's just add a uh, middle mouse event. So whenever you press middle mouse, um, we're going to have a flip flop. The first thing that comes out of the flip flop, hopefully my computer's not running too slow. Let me just dock that up there so I've got less windows. Um, the first thing coming out of the flip flop is we're going to um, grab our follow camera. So uh, control drag, control drag the room cam. The follow cam, go set um, active, I think is the one we want. Yeah, so set active like that. When we click the middle mouse, we're going to set our follow camera to not active. And we're going to set our rune camera to active. So set active for that and tick active like that. Okay. And if you copy all of this and then put that down here, if we press it again, we're going to set our third person follow camera to active and our rune camera to inactive. So that should act as a um, switching mechanic now. So if we go in the game, press middle mouse, you can see that we're using the new camera like that. And if we press middle mouse again, we go back to this camera. Now, at the moment, things are a bit funny. The camera can go all retarded and it doesn't really look too nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our rune camera maybe and we're going to say um, controller... No, that's not the one we want. Use controller your, I think is the one. Set use controller rotation your. So what this is doing is if you go up to your TPC character up here, um, you see you've got this set, these settings under pawn. Use controller rotation your. If you set that to true, um, your character will rotate whichever way you face the camera. So let's just chuck that on true there. Uh, sorry, what we'll do is we'll set that on true at the top one and false on the bottom one. So this, this whole thing up the top is setting our camera to third person. So we could probably just collapse that to a macro and say... Um, set cam to TP for third person and we can collapse this bottom one to a macro as well and we'll say set cam to uh, FP for first person just like that now let's go ahead and see how that looks so if we just jump in we're moving around like that everything's normal we hit this so now we're looking um, at whichever direction the camera is facing later on you could add some animations to make that smoother so we actually side steps or something but we're not going to worry about that for now. Let's just keep it basic. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's add a simple um, reticle kind of thing so you can see where he's aiming at the screen. So if we go to user interface widget blueprint, let's just call this reticle or maybe we'll call it rune reticle like that. This will just be super simple as well. You can make this detailed later but um, we'll just start with the basics. So if we go and add in a, not a border, let's add an image. So add an image, drop it in here, anchor it to the center like that, change the position relative to the center to zero and zero, and change the size to say 50 and 50. Maybe that's too big, maybe let's say 20 by 20. And then change the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. Um, what the alignment does is sets it so that the position is um, 0.5, it's halfway across from the edges of the, the image. So if you put it to 0.5 and 0.5, it's directly in the center, halfway from all the edges. Okay, so that's going to be our reticle. If you wanted to use an image, you could actually use an image and set that um, in here. So you could actually have a picture of a reticle, but we're just going to use a little white square because we don't really care. Um, okay, beautiful. That's our reticle. So now in our set cam to FP, what we're going to do is we're going to say... Um, Actually, you know what? Let's not do that there. Let's add a new event up here. And not custom event. We want to say begin play. Let's get event begin play. And off of begin play, we're going to say create widget. So we're going to create our reticle widget right at the start of the game. And then we're just going to hide the visibility as we switch between the camera views. So we're going to create a rune reticle. We're going to save that as a variable so we can reference that later. So I'm going to promote to variable and say... We're going to call this reticle ref, like that. And then off of that, we're going to say add to viewport, just like that. And then off of that, actually, we're also going to say 
set visibility. Um, and we're going to set the visibility of the reticle reference to hidden, just like that. So now what we can do is we're going to do our set cam to TP, third person, grab in our reticle ref and say set visibility. Um, I just realized I got these back to front. So set cam to TP is actually set cam to, um, let's just call this rune cam. Because this is the one that's setting it to the rune camera. And the other one is going to be set cam to third person. Sorry, that's my bad. I named them wrong. Okay, so when we're setting the camera to the rune camera, we want to make the reticle visible. So we can close that down. Actually, before we close that down, let's just connect this up to the output node just like that. So we've got that um, accessible here. Now, in the other one, set the cam to the third person. We are going to grab our reticle reference and we're going to say set visibility. And when we set our camera back to third person is we're just going to make our reticle hidden again. Just like that. Easy. Now we can close down those macros and we're probably not going to need them ever again. So let's go and test this out. Um, if you hit the drop down menu and go um, def current camera location, you can actually spawn wherever you have the camera. So I usually find that's better. So in here like that, now you can see we've got our reticle on the screen and it's following the mouse wherever we move it. And if we go back to third person with middle mouse, um, that reticle disappears. So there we go. That's our reticle. That's where Link's currently aiming. Um, and that works really well. So that's how we're going to aim our runes later on. And with that, I think that's all we needed to do for the setup. Um, we can close that down. We've got our reticle and we've got our third person and first person camera set up. Um, in the next video, we'll crack into Cryonis. So I'll leave that there and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Um, peace out.